Hey, how's it going? This is my new uh, IBM ThinkPad uh, laptop. This is an older laptop, but it's a very good one. It's a Pentium, got a Pentium 3 processor, a 40 gig hard drive. It uh, works very, very well for what I need it to do. <coughs> a little dusty here, but comes with I've got a Belkin wireless uh, notebook card, wireless G. IBMs are made very well. You've got audio input, you've got a headphone jack. This is the type of computer that can take a lot of abuse. It comes with a DVD-RW uh, hard drive, I'm sorry, DVD-RW CD drive. I'll open that in a minute. I need to have the case open, I think. Anyway, you've got a place for a mouse. This is the important one. You've got a place for a serial cable, a printer, and a remote display for a monitor then you have your telephone connection you've got your uh, BSL line plugs directly in you've got your power cord which is uh, very good because this computer has a very weak battery but it'll last I don't know maybe an hour it's got two USB ports and it's got uh, another place for a mouse, I suppose that's what it is. Mm, I'm not sure. You know, they've got these little pictures here to kind of tell. Great computer. Really, really good. Uh, I'm sold on IBMs. Uh, these things are made to take a lot of abuse. They're made for the rigors of programming and right now I've got it it's gonna go into the one thing I really don't care about this is the mouse I could do without uh, the tracking uh, the tracking button which I think I can zoom in these older computers, this series doesn't have the, the little touchpad. I like that touchpad a lot. I use, it, I use those a lot. So, you know, that's one downside. But it's a very, very minute downside. You get used to this and it works great. Uh, what I've got is uh, this computer. Let me see if I can adjust this tripod a little bit. This computer will do, uh, you should have Motorola cables. This is a Motorola cable for an XTS 5000. I would not use any other cable other than a Motorola for an XTS 5000. You know, you can, but, you know, if you want to do that to a, you know, a radio that costs over, you know, a grand, be my guest, but you know, it's not a good idea. You can buy a rib box and you can buy a true OEM Motorola cable like this one with a rib box. It's got a very nice amp connector to it. The rib box has a thing for power and then a data transfer. What I have on this is for six dollars shipped you can buy this nine pin to USB that's really good to have because what this will do is essentially allow you to go directly instead of going into that into this nine pin here some computers don't have it you can go into the USB so 
I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to plug it into this one because this is the one I usually use. And everything works on this computer too. Up. Okay, so you got your XTS 3000. Now, on a 3000 and on an MTS 2000, I don't, uh, I don't worry about things like factory cables, but I do since I've got them. You know, since I've got this cable and a rib box, I will go ahead and use these because uh, I believe it's safer that way. You get better and cleaner readings with these, but that said, you can still you can still have pretty good luck with a cable that is not a Motorola. So let's turn this on. Let's go to my Astro program. Click it on. It's got video tutorials. It's got startup tuning tips, which will come on here in a minute. And you can go through those, or you can cancel. I always leave these up at startup because they help me out. Uh, go up to file, then go down to read device. It'll ask you to pick a port. You go ahead and pick pick a COM port. This is COM port four. It goes into one CSQ, which is programming mode. And as you can see, there's an hourglass if you can on this lame camera that I've got. But it'll take a minute. Well, it'll take a few seconds actually, about 10 seconds, and it'll pull up a system tree which will give you all the information you need to program the radio's functions and do what you need to do. What I, get, what I do is, you, okay, you can go up here, you've got your main radio information, okay, radio information. This is always good to print out. Uh, it'll give you your model number, your serial number, then it will give you the CPS source, uh, programming information, the code plug, system package, everything. So you close out of that. It's a good thing to always save your code plugs. You can go up here, go save, and you can save your code plugs. I'm not going to do that just for time, time constraints. You've got radio configuration. Click that up, you've got radio wide. Now that's one you're gonna to wanna to go into. It's got your timeout timers, your emergency tones. It's got all the preferences that you need, your alert tones, surveillance mode, I'd never mess with. Uh, your advanced options and your advanced two options. I've got it set on rotor, auto rotary light. You can do a lot of things with the software. Uh, maybe I can zoom in. Maybe I can adjust this. It's hard working with the tripod, harder than I thought. Okay, so you can also go into general and you've, oh well let's go to, let's go ahead You've got your timeout timers. Most of these things you really don't have to mess with a whole lot. But you've got your general options. We've already gone through that. Let me close out of that real quick. I just want to make this fast if I can. Uh, go up to controls. Okay, now those controls you're going to want to really work with because you've got buttons. What do you want your buttons to do? Well, you know, they can do a lot. Uh, you've got a drop down list that you can pick from. Now, if you make a mistake in the programming, uh, let me go. Let me see if I can't. 
Let me see if I can't make a conflict here. Maybe I can do make it maybe I can get nah it didn't do it. Uh probably go down to zone and it'll say I can't do it. Or uh Let me see which one would I want. Let's go over to scan, see what scan will do. Uh, because what I'm trying to do is I'm trying. There we go, bingo. Okay, so you heard that tone. That means there's a problem. So you go, oh man, what's the problem? You go up to view. You go up to view and you want to view the invalid fields and so you click that and it says hey there's a whole lot of things you missed there's a whole lot of things you need to change and they all you can scroll down to them and it kind of tells you where you're messing up so in my case it's messed up on scan uh, and it has an arrow that says yeah you know you need to change that so the position A for the conventional uh, that will work on see the two position concentric will work I'm gonna go ahead and set it to unprogrammed but anyway let's go ahead go down I've got zone select go through this and let me just close out of this. This is just a quick tutorial on what the software can do. I know I've got an invalid field, but it would take too long to... Uh, I really don't want to change this code plug. But you've got your rotary controls, your channel select, you've got a lot of different things. Anyway, yeah, this, pro, this CPS is very, very good. It's very, very vital. Uh, if you have more than one radiator to program, you're going to want this. So, go, I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Then, let's go down to expand all. You've got your conventional, your conventional configuration. And go ahead and open that up. And you've got some options there to work with. And I'm sorry about this, but I'm just getting used to this damn tripod. I'd take it off of here at this point, but uh, conventional personalities. You've got your conventional personalities. You go into each one and you can kind of well, you can change, you can enter your frequencies. Uh, I don't think I'm going to use this tripod very much. But you can enter your frequencies, you can enter your uh, squelch types, your PL, DPL, CSQ, things like that for receive and transmit. You've got secure, secure to phone, smart push to talk, scan advanced, uh, RX options, TX options, for talk around signaling, and MDC. You get all that done. And once you're done with all of that, you go back up to invalid fields, you check it, and then you write to the device, and it's very simple to do. But anyway, yeah, this is my laptop that I am using uh, for all of my programs. I'm not going to save this code plug, but just to kind of give you an, an idea, uh, invalid fields, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close with no save because I'm going to un disconnect this. I'm going to close with no save because I really don't want to change my code plug. But anyway, uh, really good and the software I have on this will do CPS uh, CPS for the XTS 1250, 1550, uh, 750 and uh, pretty much uh, MTS 2000 if the uh, if the actually if the actual MTS 2000 has a current modern code plug, some of them will have to run through RSS. It'll do the XTS 5000s with no problem, and it will tackle pretty much just anything you'd need. 
One thing it won't do is it won't do RSS, but computers will not do that unless you can go into DOS mode and you're going to need a Windows 98 or Windows 2000. Uh, I think Windows 2000 will do, but Windows 98, Windows 98 SE, those do have that option to restart in DOS mode and to run in DOS mode. So if you've got an HT1000, you can actually, you know, it's a good idea to go ahead and get a backup and uh, get a backup and actually, uh, you know, you run the same cables through this and like I said, 9 pin adapter, uh, 9 pin is what you're going to be working with. You can switch to this, but with the Windows uh, in DOS mode, I would stick with this. Stick with a rib box and a cable and you can do some diagnostics with it. The data switch will light when, it's, when the data is being transferred. But anyway, yeah, that's just my laptop. Just wanted you guys to check it out. I know some of you knew I was going to get, get, it, get it in. I got it in, got it up and running, and I really enjoy it. So I hope this wasn't too long for you, but you will need cables. This is the cable that I use to run my uh, War Series uh, radios uh, in, and it's not a it's not a Motorola cable, but it does the job. And this actually goes right into USB. So you just run the driver, you know, you put it in the, uh, you put it in the, uh, let me see here, still not used to opening this from the front. But you put it in and, you know, it goes. But I'm real glad to get this in. And uh, I do have a separate uh, DVD CDRW uh, drive that is brand new, uh, brand new in the box with the foam that directly goes right onto this. If I ever need to replace it, I've got it. But yeah, real good laptop, real nice, and it's just what I need to program my radio. So. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you know, like I said, the battery could be better, but at the same time, I paid right at around a hundred bucks for it shipped, 105, 110 maybe shipped with Pentium 3 processor on it. It does YouTube videos. It does everything it needs. It's got XP Pro on it, and it does have the Office uh, PowerPoint, Excel, Word, uh, all the updates. It's got everything. And, you know, I mean, if you want to run video games, look for another computer. If you want to program radios, that's the kind of radio you want, or that's the kind of laptop that you want to program your radios. Because, you know, the processor isn't too fast, it's not too slow, and it's just right for what you need. And, you know, really, really nice laptop. I'm really glad to get it. And really glad to get it up and running. Just wanted you guys to check it out. Damn! If you guys made it this far, you are hardcore, because this is 18 minutes in. Later on, guys, take it easy, enjoy, <laughs> if you can call that enjoying, because it's really rambled on for a long time. Uh, anyway, I know I suck at making videos, uh, you know, that's, that's a proven point that's gone on for, you know, over a couple of years, but I do my best, and uh, try to show you what's out there. Anyway, yeah. It's a real nice ThinkPad, and with a, you know, with a, uh, with a uh, CPS in it, really, really good. And hey, what more do you need? Take it easy, guys. Later on.